The pension crisis continues. No state can find its way out of this mess. It's too big. It's too messy. There's no way out except to default. But over time, we will see it get worse. Then a trigger will be set off. What that trigger is, we're not sure yet. Once it does, every American's pension is put at risk. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Illinois, I'm talking to you today. We have a very serious scenario that is unfolding. It continues to get worse, and unfortunately, nothing good is being done to resolve this. Now, there's a report from Wire Points that I'm going to go through today. It has so many different charts. You can see it for yourself here. The link will be under the sources of this video. Let's get into it. Pension benefit growth overwhelms Illinois economy taxpayer incomes. So you could see at the bottom here, whether you're looking at state personal income, median household income, inflation, and so on, it doesn't compare to the promised state pension benefits. How would it ever be possible to make these levels when you can't even get these levels to come up? This shows you how completely off their assumptions are. They are off base. They are unfortunately making promises they can't keep. And I've seen the image before of the lady holding the sign and it said, a pension is a promise. And that right there is what people unfortunately have been fooled into believing and that is not the case a pension is there to be stolen that's what it should say illinois pension benefits have grown 8.8 percent annually since 1987 so you'll see that right here annual growth rate um you know we'll total they've totaled this all up but really understand how this affects the average individual. Illinois pension benefits have grown far faster than state revenues, inflation, income, and population. So the total growth here, state pension benefits, 1987 to 2016, is 1,000%. Now, how much more pension benefits have grown? So you're looking at state personal income, 4.5 times more general revenues, and it goes on, inflation even 9.5 times more. So understand how very serious this really is. There's no way, it's mathematically impossible. They would need to be bailed out at some sort of high level, they would need to cut back, and this is not going to go well for the people, for the government, and for what happens on the streets afterwards, I assure you. Pension benefits owed to state workers overwhelm state finances. How many times have you heard me talk about this? Look, 682%. That's the 2016 numbers. Of course, it's gotten much worse since then. There's no way, absolutely no way, that this you know continued trajectory here, that they're going to pay it back. We need to have some sort of, you know, change that would occur that they can pick up the pieces and be able to then continue on at a more reasonable rate but they can't they can't it's going parabolic you can see between 2012 and 2016 it has really risen dramatically so we know it's just going to get worse now i've covered something similar to this before but i'll show you here because it's part of this report illinois has the third fastest pension benefit growth of any state look doesn't matter if you're in first place or last place, however you want to look at it. New Jersey, New Hampshire, Illinois, Nevada, Kentucky, and so on. Nobody here is going to be paying back on their pensions in full. Illinois pension benefits have grown far faster than benefits in peer states. So compare that to the others here, whether it's uh, Illinois, Kentucky, and the U.S. average, which is 5.5%. So we have a much worse condition here in Illinois, and that shouldn't be surprising anybody because this has been a problem in Illinois for quite a while, and people have been speaking up about this. Illinois household incomes would be uh, $300,000 today if they had grown like state pensions. Now think about that. 
Has your household income been able to grow at 8.8% per annum? I don't think so. Most people haven't. In fact, since 1987, let's say from 27,000 up to 314,000. So let's just say you were earning. Imagine that. You were earning in 1987 $27,000. And today you're earning 314000 I don't think so. I don't think there's anybody who was making a wage of $27,000 in 1987 is making a wage of $314,000. I don't, I don't think that's the case. And the uh, statistics will prove that. The actual household income growth is 2.9%. So you'd be making $61,000, all right? $61,000. That shows us they can't grow at this rate. It's impossible. Illinois pension assets have grown 7.2% annually since 1987. They're actually making the claim in this report, by the way, that they've simply overpromised, and that's the problem. And I don't think so. I think we have some shortfalls that are not being discussed. Illinois pension assets have grown far faster than state revenues, inflation, income, and population. Again, pension assets. Suggesting to everyone that the pension assets have grown considerably, yet we have shortfalls. So I'm not really uh, into believing everything that they say here. Growing as a percentage of state finances, you can see that here, increasing. Again, big problems. Not The data doesn't line up. Illinois has the seventh fastest pension asset growth of any state. Well, if it's growing at this rate, the rate at which they've promised everybody is simply much higher. And as time goes on, it's only going to create a much worse condition because you've made these promises. So even if they bring them down, which they don't seem to be doing, they ultimately can't pay out. That's what the end of the story is. Illinois pension assets have grown far faster than assets in peer states. You can see that again here for yourself, just comparing the different states. I'll move on. When you contribute $24 billion more to pensions than the original Edgar Ramp required. And so how they did this though, I'm sure, I'm not, I don't have the data in front of me, but I'm sure that this was stolen from one other part. They have to do this. They do this all the time to create surplus. They take it from one part of the government, bring it to the other. It's not like it magically grows. It doesn't work like that. Simply doesn't work like that. Total taxpayer contributions to five state pension funds, 96 to 2017. Now, you're not going to be able to see all the data here in these, but it'll give us a good idea of what this report shows us. I mean, I'm, I'm making my own little points interjecting. Illinois pension shortfall would be 40 to $85 billion lower today if pension benefits had grown at neighboring states' rates since, since 2003. Imagine the crisis that would have been created if they wouldn't actually be growing at this rate. That shows us anyway. Depending on which state we're looking at here and their growth, the U.S. average, for example, would have been at $90 billion. Comparatively, this is obviously a big difference, $130 billion to $90 billion, And that's going at the U.S. average. So Illinois, according to them, they're growing considerably in terms of their pensions, but you're putting a big burden on people because ultimately, where do the pensions come from? It's people putting money into that pool. They're dumping their money in. And they hope at some point to be able to get that little trickle, get that trickle and have that for themselves. But ultimately, that's going to get axed. It's just a matter of time. Illinois would have no crisis today if pension benefits had grown 5.4% a year since 1987. There you go. Actual pension benefits, looking at this line here, and the actual pension assets and pension benefit growth grown at 5.4% a year. It's interesting to note, that's all I'm going to say for today. Understand that no matter which way you look at this, when you look at pensions, you have to understand people are putting their money in today to pay out to people today, not tomorrow, but today. 
All of these have red lines. All of these are not being able to um, be, let's say, paid off in the future. It's just mathematically impossible. We've gone through that. We've covered that. And we know. We know the truth. We know how it's all going to unfold. The unfortunate part is the people who are going to get screwed over in the process. Then what happens? Well, they take it to the streets. And on the streets, things start getting ugly really fast. And that's really ultimately what they want. Because when they can do that, they can enact certain laws like, coincidentally, Rahm Emanuel said, never let a good crisis go to waste. So they do what they couldn't do before. And ultimately... They'll come in, they'll swoop in, they'll make some decisions, they'll enact some new policies, put them into place, and the people will be screwed over in the end. Well, that's just the way it goes. That's the way the financial system is designed. We have central banks, we have commercial banks, we have politicians, and they all work in concert. They all decide what policies will be put into place, and you don't have a say in it. If you vote in another politician, I assure you, same problems will be put in place no matter who's in congress no matter who's in your parliament we will always have the same problems because the corporations run the show that's the way it works the big corporations own these politicians or they are in the revolving door the same with the financial industry no matter how high you go up that central bank they are all in with it whether it's henry paulson giving himself a 200 million dollar tax break because he becomes the Treasury Secretary, coming from Goldman Sachs. We know the fraud. We know how it's all broken down, and it's just a matter of fact. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, it helps to support this channel, so I do appreciate it very much. We are heading towards 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube, so I would appreciate if you hit that subscribe button as well. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you'll find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can actually flip through these books. If you go over to Amazon, there's a look inside feature. It's going to allow you to flip through the pages of these books to see if you like them. Take care.